So hey everyone, it's Trevor Turnbull here from Sports Networker, and I'm joined by Paul Swangard. How's it going, Paul? I'm good, thanks. Good, yeah. good. So I'm at, we're at the Warsaw MBA uh, program here uh, in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, Paul had me come in and speak to the students about uh, social networking and LinkedIn and how they can leverage all these tools from a, a networking standpoint. And in getting to speak to a lot of these students, I've, I've really got to get some insight into what they find a value in the MBA program because really I'm just kind of learning about these MBA programs myself too. Uh, so I wanted to talk to the guy who's running the show here and really get an insight into you know what, what is the MBA program all about um, and what do you hope to, well let's start with that and then I'll, I'll elaborate on it from there. Yeah, so what the, the heck we're doing here? Yeah, what is the MBA, yeah. MBA program all about? Well, you know I think the, the place we have to start and, and for a lot of people who are looking at getting education related to sport they, they often find themselves finding their way to sport management programs and, and that really mm -hmm. is the starting point for our education system. Uh, programs in sport management have been around for decades. Uh, typically they have been housed in the School of Kinesiology, School of Physical Education, you found uh, you know, almost a plethora of different career paths that were related to sports, everything from coaching to parks and rec to tourism. And our founder, Jim Warsaw, who was a graduate of the University of Oregon and grew up in the sport industry, um, noted in the early 90s that there was actually no business school anywhere mm -hmm. that was housing a program that was built around the world of sports. So in 93 we founded the Warsaw Sports Marketing Center and like to think we sort of created a category of uh, a new way to study sports where really our students are coming here first and foremost to study business mm -hmm. and get all those tools underneath them so they can understand finance and accounting and management and marketing and then mold on top of that in, in our curriculum you know, studying things that are specific to the world of sport and then what the center then does is uh, envelops that whole academic experience with a rich array of out of classroom things everything from speakers like yourself to, uh, to study tours to mentorship programs to events where they can get their own experience and yeah. we hope that sort of holistic approach is something that uh, students today are kind of looking for which is more than just sitting in a classroom and listening to folks like you and I tell it, tell it how it's supposed <laughs> tell to be. Tell them how to do stuff, yeah. right. So the experiential learning, I guess, is kind of the, the key word in that so that you guys are really pushing towards, right? It's it's less about the, the book skills and all that kind of stuff and more about what's going on in the real world out here and um, how they can connect with other people that are doing sports as a business or whatever it might be. Right? Yeah, so and grad sponsorship. graduate schools have always been built around that, whether you're looking at going to a you know, school like Harvard or you're looking to go to a school like ours, which focuses more on kind of a niche area. I mean, it's a who you know business. Yeah. So building your network and, and, and leveraging some of the great suggestions you made today, I think is helping students understand the power of uh, of not only building a network the traditional way, but you know, in the new ways that can be uh, given to you through new technologies and other ways to to link yourself with other people, but um, I go. think the the line that Jim Warsaw always used is this program was to be the marriage of where book smarts meets street smarts, yeah. and uh, there is only so much you can learn about this industry in the classroom. Uh, you sat in one of our seminar sessions today where we uh, worked with a, one of our industry uh, professors, Declan Bolger, who yeah, works with Major great. League Soccer, and yeah. you know bringing in sort of real world what's going on in Major League Soccer today, and then the construct of some of the other you know current events that are going on in our industry. And um, when students can take what they learn out of that book and then connect with experiences they've had, where we've taken them to New York or taken them to China or taken them to you know other markets, when they can take the experiences that they've had discussions with senior industry people and tie those things all together. I think they walk out of here with the network they potentially need, a few doors that have been open for them, and maybe more than anything else, the confidence that they are immediately able to go into this industry and feel like they can contribute something. And, you know, we have a mixture of both. Uh, career switchers, you know, we, and you met some today. You know, I was yeah. a, a, an insurance guy or an accountant. An accountant, yeah, yeah, uh, no doubt. And uh, you know, they're trying to evolve their careers into a new direction around that passion for sport. And we have others who have that industry experience, and all of them are looking for the same thing. You know, a little bit more training and uh, a few more people in their in their net in their network. And and we fortunately been pretty successful at doing that in a very boutique way. We're you know, very, um, very proud of the fact that we really only take 20 students a year in our graduate program, and yeah. um, 
it means something to have been a Warsaw Center student, and that's what we're very proud of and, and hope to continue moving forward. Yeah, that you actually answered a question I was going to ask, which is how many people do you typically have in, in the classes uh, on a yearly basis? So it's around 20? Yeah, the Oregon MBA program is, is small by design, and, and what Oregon decided a long time ago was, you know, we're not going to be able to compete for the general MBA uh, audience when we're looking at trying to attract students that would look at places like some of the top 25 schools. But if we took areas that Oregon would be known for um, that are, are natural to what you think the Oregon brand would stand for and specialize in those areas, um, that's going to kind of be our success moving forward. So we picked four areas, uh, entrepreneurship and innovation. Oregon is known kind of as its pioneering spirit. Uh, sustainable business, Oregon, not just because our team colors are green and <laughs> yellow and sometimes all sorts of different colors these days, yeah. but you know the greenness of, of Oregon. Um, financial and securities analysis from a money management, a lot of money management going on, and we have a strong focus in Asia Pacific. And then sports business, and you know, Oregon, I think for a lot of people, their first introduction to the Oregon brand now comes through our sport heritage, whether it's our ever-changing football uniforms or the, the heritage of track and field and the Olympic uh, you know, success that our, our former student athletes have had. and um, So each of our modules, those four areas, are only trying to attract about 40 students a year, or 20 students a year, 40 years. across the two-year program, and they become, you know, uh, a unified group of MBA students, and yet they all have their individual passions that are kind of interconnected with the center that they're affiliated with. Right. Is there any uh, specific success stories that you can uh, point to with past grads and whatnot that have gone on to work with different companies, leagues, uh, teams, whatever it might be? Yeah, I'll give you a few. Uh, you know, dating back to our first graduating class in 1998, uh, Li Sheng, he's, uh, he's actually a Chinese national, uh, rose through the ranks at Visa, uh, was asked then to move back to China to lead their sponsorship program for the Beijing Olympic Games. Uh, then rose to general manager of the company and uh, has recently moved on and started his own sports and entertainment company, which is a, a fascinating story. It's, uh, he's focused on really starting with music and with uh, figure skating. He's basically using figure skating to grow the sports market in China. Wow. Uh, and that's a, that's a theme that you'll see with a lot of our students, kind of the international flavor. Seems like a very niche type of a sport, but you just never know. With well, and and, in China, and for those who follow, yeah. Yeah. for those who follow, follow um, for those who follow the success of the Vancouver Games, the Chinese did very well. That's very true. Um, yeah. And what he he had a filter where he wanted to have a sport where there were where where the athletes in the country were good, and that was the case with that sport where he could make stars out of them. And and these particular skaters at that moment had some great stories that he could tell. Uh, it was television friendly and it was event attendance friendly and he found uh, you know ice skating was where he wanted to start. Uh, Akash Jain, another one of our MBAs who's now um, leading uh, the NBA's India initiative. So he's moved to, uh, to India after working in the league offices in New York and in charge of you know grassroots development of a sport where most people like cricket more than they like a basketball game. and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we, you know, we had Ty Stewart, who's the executive director of the World Series of Poker. So you know, maybe so a real wide range. Wide thing, you know, range, like yeah. And I, I think our buckets are pretty clear. You know, kind of the three legs to our stool, or you know, teams, leagues, events, and activities. But we found at the NBA level probably more leagues than than the actual teams. Yeah. Uh, sponsorship and agencies. You know, the intersection between non-sports brands and their alignment with with sports as a marketing vehicle. And then, you know, as you drove down here from uh, north of the border, you uh, went through Portland, which uh, is the epicenter, at least in, in our mind, right. to the sports apparel business. And yeah. not just for the brands you associate with Oregon, like our friends in Beaverton, but North American headquarters of Adidas, uh, Lee Ming's first North American presence and, and storefront is in Portland. Keen, Yakima, Icebreaker from New Zealand. Um, it's an amazing array of companies there. and obviously attract a lot of students who have a strong interest in that apparel sector and that works its way all the way up into the northwest which is great because we've got you know great companies in, uh, in not only Seattle but up in uh, in Vancouver as well with you know Lululemon and others so yeah. um, lots of great opportunities and you know I think as you've gone through your career too it's um, it's important for people to understand that the way you can work in sports is a much broader 
definition than maybe oftentimes even our students come in the door with. You know, I want I want to be the general manager of my favorite team is often the the starting <laughs> point for a lot of people. And the yeah. you know the the truth is, if you can define your ultimate job description first rather than focus on a specific brand or a specific team, it's really amazing to see how many ways you can do what you love to do with an intersection in the world of sport. And I think that's been kind of the culture we've tried to create here where so many kids will come in and, you know, I have this passion for wanting to be around sports and I think I know what I want to do, but the serendipity of having all these experiences that they get exposed to, there's um, great satisfaction in, in, in my ten years here of seeing moments where a light turned on that a kid yeah. didn't even know that light was available and uh, yeah. if we can give them that runway to go off and do something that they love to do then you know we, we've done our job yeah well I think you see that with you know if anybody who wants to work in sports there's a lot of people that want to work in sports you know everybody has a favorite team and they say oh I'd love to be the general manager of that team right but the students that you have in the San Diego program, I can tell, are um, very proactive, right? So a lot of them have work experience already, whether it be internships or actual paid jobs within sports teams and stuff. And of course, you get experience along the way in a number of different roles as an intern, but sometimes it's pouring coffee, other times it's filling out spreadsheets, other times it is real world experience. Yeah. But I think the one thing that I started to get from um, talking to your students today was that with the MBA program here, they kind of get a feel of everything, right? So they can they can hear from people that, you know, like Declan, who's in club services, who's played, who's been involved in a number of different roles in sports, and he can give his feedback and insight of his own experience, right? Yeah. Anytime you learn from a, a mentor of sorts, it helps you kind of define or at least understand what's potentially out there, right? And I and I don't think that any anybody who wants to get into this business should not wear blinders when it comes to their professional career. You know, I you know, I I didn't grow up dreaming of being a college administrator. I mean, I wanted to work in sports and had a background in, in sports media, but um, you know, I found my way here for the reasons that I, I spoke to before. There were things about this job that I absolutely love coming every day to do. And I think if we can provide and I think so often students who come into programs like ours get fixated on what that summer experience is going to be as if that's their only step into the real world while they're here as a student. Mm -hmm. And what we've tried to do and what I would encourage any other program like ours to do is to create an environment where you're stepping out of that door of academia every day. Um, you're either writing about it as you, you know, we create a platform for our students to blog and write about the industry as issues come up. Yeah. Uh, we provide them opportunities to work on signature events where they get the experience to go out and try to sell a sponsorship or design an event that will be, um, you know, better than events that we've seen in the quote unquote real world. And afford them the opportunity with our industry partners to go out and get little you know, get snacking kind of size uh, experiences with brands. So we've had this fall students working with Adidas on product focus groups. We've got some folks working with the MLS on some uh, some online initiatives. We're working with the uh, Olympic trials and track and field here in the U.S. that'll be here in Eugene next summer on their social media strategy. All of those, if designed could have been a traditional summer internship for one person. Yeah. Um, but now we've created a structure whereby you know a number of students can all come together and perhaps have that opportunity to get a little taste of that and then walk away and reflect on that experience, um, which I think a lot of students don't often do. Yeah. Um, what did I learn? What do I not like about it? What would I never want to do again? And, uh, and to do that multiple times and on an ongoing basis uh, inside this program, I think, sets them to be much more keenly aware of where they're going to go with their career once they get out the door after graduation. Cool. Um, I wanted to bring up one more point here. Uh, the, the University of Oregon has obviously done an amazing job over the last number of years with their own brand. Just the colors themselves mm -hmm. really stand out, right? Uh, the one thing, and I'm going to point up there, or maybe Katrina, I don't know if you can uh, grab one of the bobbleheads or something here too, but I've noticed in your own branding, like for the for the Warsaw MBA program, um, maybe it's not even possible to <laughs> she grab She might one. be behind class, and I wouldn't want to grab, we have a two foot tall uh, bobblehead here off camera, but uh, maybe we can uh, pop it in or... Yeah, we'll pop it in, I'll, I'll maybe try and find a photo of it or something. But anyways, it's a bobblehead that, of the, um, the founder, right? Uh -huh. It's Jim Warsaw, correct? Mm -hmm. And I've noticed from a social strategy, even you guys have taken photos of this at different events and stuff, kind of as a branding thing, 
to show that you know here's Jim coming along with all the students and stuff. Um, how, what's uh, what's your guys' thoughts with regards to the brand of, of Warsaw overall as it relates to uh, the University of Oregon as well? Well, it was important for us. We um, we feel as uh, here it comes. And, and here comes Big Jim. <laughs> we'll, we'll actually put him right here. And put him right in the middle. I'm, I'm honored to have him, you know, in the broadcast here. You know, you know, he's he's very agreeable now. Every time I talk to him about, <laughs> about subjects. Um, so, quick background: Jim Warsaw's family, uh, his father David Warsaw, is, is believed by many to be kind of the father of sports licensing. They, they did a deal with the Wrigley family in the 1920s to get the rights to create a ashtray that looked like Wrigley Field and sold it out in front of the stadium and it was kind of the first example of licensed merchandise. And right. then in the 1940s, the family came up with the bobblehead doll. And uh, Jim, uh, unfortunately, is no longer with us, was diagnosed and, and, uh, and fell ill due to complications from Parkinson's disease. And one of the last things we did before he died was commissioned a bobblehead to celebrate our 15th anniversary. And, in the, in the tragedy of, of losing him, we wanted to instill in our students the understanding that it was really his, his core ethos that made this program important and the sense of, of family that we wanted to carry forward. Because we knew with only 20 students coming out the door every year yeah. that if we didn't have a strong interconnection between those 20, then the scalability of this thing and the strength of this brand would be very hard. You know, we could do it maybe over a 50-year planning horizon, but over the, you know, the first 20 years of this place, every student mattered. And, uh, and so out of, uh, out of the tragedy of that, we created a, a microsite, jimwarsaw.com, that, that tells his story. And then we, uh, we actually got uh, um, the bobbleheads built, uh, smaller ones, obviously, for most mm -hmm. people, and uh, <laughs> yeah. gave... So gave, it's a little bit tough to throw in the carry-on well, at the is, airport, yeah, right? TSA would probably have an issue with that. Um, <laughs> and we asked every student, uh, every alumni, when they are at a, when they're at a place where they feel the Warsaw Center and may, maybe more in particular Jim had enabled them to get to a place that they were looking back saying this is what I really wanted when I went and went and went to Oregon um, that we'd ask them to take a picture and, and it's it's kind of our and I'm not going to brand drop because I got a sponsorship deal but you know the Travelocity Gnome you know it's this idea of you know getting him into places and and, and Jim always was so very proud of what students were able to accomplish once they left here and in a small way um, not only for his memory but his family and just and now it's um, it's become sort of a you know who can get the next great picture so you know last year it was uh, uh, Marcus uh, one of our alums who works for the Miami Heat uh, got Jim into the Miami Heat dancers tryouts, and uh, <laughs> wow. Jim would love that. Um, yeah, yeah. We were in uh, we were in Lausanne, Switzerland, when they uh, awarded the uh, the Olympic bid to Brazil. Um, we've taken them to the Great Wall of China, and uh, you know I think that's important for companies. Yeah. I mean, if you and in the you know in the in the wake probably in, and timely of the loss of Steve Jobs at Apple and. We use the example of when Bill Bowerman, the legendary shoe designer and, and co-founder of Nike, passed away. If you cannot instill in the future generation of your employees, or in our case, our employees are really our students, our product, if you can't make them understand what it meant and why we started this place in the first place, it becomes really hard to keep the core essence of your brand strength alive. And yeah. so it's been a it's been a fun activity. Jim is uh, he was an indomitable spirit and. Uh, and somebody we're very proud of uh, promoting any way we can. Yeah. Well, in the research that I've done and just feedback from other people, he sounded like an amazing man. Obviously, I never got the opportunity to meet him, but um, he is an extension of what everybody in this program represents. So um, that's awesome. I just wanted to make sure we got this guy <laughs> on camera because I didn't even realize that this one actually was a bobblehead, but that's brilliant. Well, so. you always got to find the right uh, right designers. But you know, his sure. idea was, um, and you know, there's little little brand homages in here. We talked about it earlier. You know, it's where uh, book smarts where meet street smarts. And if I don't know if you can see oh, it nice. on the, on yeah. the uh, screen, he's actually standing on a road. Um, Jim, you know, passion, integrity, and leadership were his three brand pillars for this place. And uh, uh, while we miss him every day, we, we believe that every day we're living up and maybe even exceeding some of his expectations. And uh, and it's 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 what we do. And I think you know for the and there's great programs around you know around the globe now that are entering this space. And I think as 
if anyone watching is you know interested in, in learning more about you know an educational opportunity I think just look for places that really deliver on the ultimate promise are they getting people in the industry uh, do they create an environment where you're getting a, a good blend of both um, training from really smart people and as well um, you know experiences where you can build your resume I mean I, I like to think and I, whether you disagree or not five percent of your resume is where you went to school we actually had that conversation earlier yeah. right before we started this interview but no without a doubt I agree with that yeah yeah so what we can do for you to build out that other 95 percent and, mm -hmm. and and there's great schools and, and schools that focus on you know wanting to work in in the Olympic movement versus wanting to work in team sports and so just do your due diligence and uh, and make sure you're investing uh, what is an expensive dollar these days for education and, and getting what you're coming for, which is a return on that investment. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Well, I love what you guys are doing here, and I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Uh, how can people find out more information? Where do they go? Online? Sure. Uh, well, easiest place to or go. They can just come into your office, and just sit down, and I'll ask your questions. At operators you. are standing by. No, uh, <laughs> you know, WarsawCenter.com is is okay. our our landing page. Uh, you can also follow us on, on Twitter, and I, I, I tweet, tweet a lot. I do a lot of stuff uh, like you do related to, you know, issues in the industry and, and providing some perspective. Um, or just, you know, uh, reach out to us by phone or by email. We, we're really excited when we can, you know, share what we're doing, but also just offer advice to people. I mean, there's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of challenge these days kind of maneuvering through what this world is going to look like once we figure out what the economy is going to look like and mm -hmm. uh, we've we, you know we'd be more than happy to help and uh, it's all about just creating an environment where people feel like uh, we could be a resource to them so whether you're a student or a prospective student or just someone in the industry that's looking for more information you know we, we encourage people to reach out great stuff yeah. I'll make sure to link all that up for you so that you guys can go and check it out and Thank you again. Really You're appreciate welcome. it. Go Ducks, as we say. Go Ducks.